Hey guys, Michael Corsentino for Shutter Magazine. This month we're looking at colored shadows created with gels and lighting. No Photoshop here to create these, all in camera and all using gels and lighting. And I'm going to teach you how to do it. Uh, well, I saw images sort of like this floating around in various Google image searches that I had done and it was a huge mystery to me how they were created. Um, and here's why. Because if we look at this image, this series of images, you can see here that our subject is all in white light. Um, however, the shadows behind her are in these really cool colors, right? So how is that done? Because it's appear apparently what we have is one light source. Uh, the shadow seems to be cast from that source, you know, uh, based on it falling on a subject and then casting a shadow behind, yet it's a completely different color. Uh, so this is a real mystery for me, and uh, I really, I love a good lighting puzzle, I love a good puzzle, and I, I had to try and figure it out. So I did a bunch of poking around online uh, and asking, uh, friends of mine who uh, have more experience with gels than I do, and um, nobody really knew, oddly enough. Um, but I did find a couple of clues online, so I, and then I set about kind of figuring it out myself. So I'll walk you through the process of how, um, how I got to those finals that we saw in the opening slide. So first and foremost, um, you know, I had to determine where I was going to put my lights and, and how I was going to introduce the color and yet still maintain a balanced subject. So one of the techniques that I tried first, and I'd seen this done with some different lighting instruments, which I'll talk about later, but I tried to use it with what I had on hand and I didn't create the effect that I wanted. So let me explain why. So basically what I've done here is I've got two strobes that you can see here in the corner, one without a gel, and that's that one, and that's for my white light. And then the other one is gelled, which you can see here, and that's this one, right? And that's got a red gel on it. Okay, so what that's doing is, and basically I'm using the, the first light, the, the light that is in white, that's going to light up the subject, and that is going to be at a higher power than the um, than the other one. So this light's going to be at a higher power. Uh, the main light is going to be at a higher power than the gelled light. And so basically, you're trying to overpower the light, the white light, so that the white light on the subject here is the dominant light source, and then the gelled light behind. Uh, introduces the color that it falls it falls behind it's it's uh, um, it, it's lesser powered so it doesn't affect the subject as much you can see that the subject still falls into a bit of red but not quite as much okay so um, there were a couple reasons I didn't like it first of all it introduced a lot of color on the subject that I really didn't want and I'm sure with a you know if I used a strip box this was just seven inch reflectors and I could have tweaked it in such a way that it, it probably could have given me a more even coverage on the white light down here etc on the on the uh, on the subject however even more important was the quality of the shadow that it was casting. Uh, that was what I really didn't like. I didn't like the fact that there were double shadows here. You can see here that there are double shadows. Um, one of the shadows is dark, uh, you know, kind of gray-black shadow. And then the other one is uh, kind of a, a red. It's not quite as saturated as I would have liked and, and that sort of thing. So, so it wasn't working for me on many different levels. So I really kind of had to... Uh, go back to the drawing board and try some different things. So my next step was to just introduce one light source and really work on the direction of the shadow and creating just one shadow. Um, and the direction and the angle of the shadow is what I'm working on here in this setup. So you can see here I've just got this one light. It's lighting up the subject. It's casting a shadow here uh, on the background. Um, and I've got a nice angle uh, to the shadow. I can see that I've got a nice bit of separation between the subject and the shadow, which is in the direction that I wanted. So that's, that's really step, uh, step number two um, in the process, right, of trying to kind of get to where I want to be. So that's getting close to where I want to be. Now I need to find out how to introduce color into that shadow. And as I said in the, in the article, basically the technique that I came to is sort of counterintuitive 
because you're not really seeing a second catch light and you're not seeing a second source of light. It's a little bit, a bit of light, light trickery, is that what you're doing is you are introducing a second light here and that's, I have that light gelled and I have it in a, um, a gridded strip box here and that is what's lighting up that shadow. It's filling the shadow with whatever gelled color that you put inside the softbox. And I was using a bunch of Roscoe gels. We'll talk about those later. And those were casting the color here. I'm just testing it out with some pink. Um, and you can see here that now I've got this subject that is in white light from my main light here is giving me all this nice white light uh, all on the subject, right? Nice white balanced light. So the skin tone is going to be natural looking and, and which is what I wanted for this. But the shadow being cast by that light is now filled with really cool color and it's a completely separate source. So you've got these two separate things happening, which I, which I really love. Um, you've got the color and the shadow and then you've got a balanced subject. So that was really working for me. Now, one, what I did not like about this, uh, at this point, the next step, I shouldn't say what I didn't like, but the next step was really refining that shadow. Because you can see here that the shadow is a little soft. It doesn't have that crispness, that edge. I really wanted a defined, crisp shadow falling behind the subject. So I achieved that in two ways. First of all, what it is, I moved the subject much more close, much closer to the background. And then I also moved my key light back considerably right here. I moved this back, I wanna say about 15 feet from the subject. So between here and here, we've got about 15 feet going on. That in conjunction with the use of a Profoto Magnum reflector, uh, gave the edge a real crisp, hard-edged quality, and I'll show you that reflector. And you can see here, before we get to that slide with the reflector, how different that shadow is. Let's put back on the slide before. You can see here it's really kind of soft, uh, and then with a the combination of moving the, the mannequin closer to the background and putting that light back much further and using that magnum reflector, it made all the difference in the world. Now we've got this nice, crisp shadow. You can see here there's a real edge to the to the transition between highlight and shadow and, I, and I, I love that that's really what I was looking for between here and here you've got that real crisp edge so that's what I wanted and let's just let me show you the uh, what the magnum reflector looks like and I think you'll, you'll get an idea of uh, you know why it creates that quality of light it's got this really uh, you know kind of dappled um, or pebbled I should say silver interior uh, it creates a gorgeous really um, specular contrast equality of light. And you can modify it if you want a little bit less. You can use tough spawn or any kind of diffusion materials in front of it. But I used it just bare because uh, I wanted that really, you know, uh, contrasty, punchy kind of light. And it just, it did the trick. For the gels, I used Roscoe filter kits. These are great. Uh, I think Roscoe offers about six of these. They're really great. For this, I used two of them. I used the Cal Color Kit and the Color Effects Kit. Here, I used blue uh, 60 and then the 26 light red and 89 moss green. Green, um, for the finals, which are here. Now, in the article, I mention uh, another lighting instrument that I'm really excited about, and that is the Profoto Zoom Spot, and that's the, these guys here. So I just want to talk about these briefly. I picked up the old model on eBay for about 650 bucks, which was a real steal because the new one, which you see here on the right, which, you know, admittedly incorporates a 4,800 watt second light head is 10,500 500 bucks. So that just wasn't in the cards at the moment. It wasn't really practical. It's kind of a niche tool, not something I'd use all the time. I really couldn't justify anything close to that. But for 650 bucks, this, um, the one on the, on the left does pretty much the same thing. You just have to put a light inside of it and it allows you to really focus the light. You can see here that it's got those two knobs. Both, both models have two knobs on it uh, on the front. And those are going to allow you to uh, either uh, vary the beam of light, a flood, I should say, to a spot. Um, and, and then the, uh, zoom, the, um, the knob in the back is going to allow you to uh, focus the light. So you can, you can have it really kind of soft or you can focus it to a very crisp edge in the circle of light that's created. And then you've got these four what are called cutters. You can see the four little, or you can only see three of them, but it's got these prongs coming, outside, um, coming off of it. And those you can use to create all sorts of shapes. So just any number, you can create it, it's just the sky's the limit really. Um, so a great tool uh, and one that I'm really going to be doing a lot of work with um, moving forward 
forward. But I just wanted to mention that uh, if you find one of these on eBay and you, your pro photo person, uh, you know, snap it up because they uh, talked to my pro photo guy and he was telling me they're extremely rare and it was quite the find. Um, so anyway, that is colored shadows with gels and light. I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun doing this, and I look forward to incorporating this technique into my bag of tricks. Until next time, this has been Michael Corsentino, and we'll see you next month.